Good morning. Greetings to my brothers and sisters at Amokyo Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Bernard Chow. I'm a lecturer in practical theology, teaching in the areas of Christian education and leadership at Trinity Theological College. Uh, I happen to be teaching in the area of uh, rethinking youth ministry this particular semester. Well, I want to thank your pastor in charge, Reverend Anthony Lee, for this invitation to speak to you. I want to thank you as a church for your support for TTC by observing TTC Sunday, but also for your affirmation, prayers, financial support, and participation in our causes. <clears throat> this has been an interesting year for TTC. It has seen the retirement of our longtime principal of 19 years, the Reverend Dr. Ngui Fung Yen, and the installation of a new principal, Reverend Dr. Edwin Tay. Uh, and the service for that just occurred this past week. Uh, in spite of COVID-19, our enrollment remains strong, and we are continuing our work of equipping the saints for the ministry uh, and uh, moving ahead with all our causes. Um, and we continue to even offer uh, online causes through Equip, and we invite you to come online onto our website, ttc.edu.sg, enjoying the current free uh, online courses that are being offered through Equip. Well, let's turn to today's scripture. And before we do so, let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Your word is life. And we ask, Lord, help us pay attention to your spirit that, Lord, we may live life to the full as you have ordained. We pray now as we pay attention to your word that, Lord, we want to ask you to have full reign in our lives. So come and convict us or encourage us as we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to talk about loving one another. And let me read for us from John chapter 13, verses 31 to 38. And I will be reading from the NIV, John chapter 13, verses 31 to 38. When he, that is Judas, was gone, Jesus said, Now the, man, the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, Where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This text occurs in the last evening before the day Jesus was going to be falsely accused, wrongly tried, and then unjustly sentenced to death by crucifixion. Whilst the disciples were still fairly clueless as to what was about to unfold, Jesus was very aware of his task, and the time. It would be soon time to die. The last words of any dying person tend to be important, especially when they know they are dying. These are the last words, the last instructions, the last commandments from the Lord Jesus on the night before that first Good Friday. And so after an unusual Passover meal, 
in, in which Jesus re reinvents as the sacrament of the Holy Communion, Jesus proceeds to take off his outer garments, stooped like a servant at the feet of his disciples, and began to wash their feet. In a shocking, counterculture, mind-blowing act of humility, Jesus reveals both the true nature and degree of love that comes from a servant heart. The master as servant, the first as the last. This is the true nature, eternal value, and gritty reality of the kingdom of God. So we hear here in John 13 verses 14 to 15, Jesus telling his disciples, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should do as I have done for you. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus' act of washing the disciples' feet points to two kingdom principles. Firstly, we must all be washed by Jesus. We are all sinners for whom the wages of sin is death. We all need the washing of forgiveness that comes only through Jesus. Secondly, Jesus has shown us an example of how we are to love, a love that puts others before ourselves. That is what it means to be a servant, a servant love for others. It is a love without condition and without expectation of return. Remember, Jesus washed the feet of Judas too. Today we look a little closer at the conversation that happens just after the washing of the disciples' feet and Judas's departure from the fellowship of Jesus and the disciples. We look at the true hero. This after dinner conversation reveals to us firstly, who the true hero of the Christian story is. It is not you and it is not me. It is not great Christian leaders, pastors and missionaries of the past. And it's certainly not the superstars of the Christian world today whom we are in great danger of idolizing, listening more to their online sermons or podcasts than perhaps reading the Bible for ourselves, and yes, even following preachers and pastors from church to church. The true hero of the Christian story is not you and me. The way we sometimes think about life and about the church and about our Christian witness, the way we complain, the way we criticize, the way we are, uh, we, the, the times we desire recognition and public praise for our contributions, the way we, are, we involve ourselves or choose not to be involved in the mission and work of Jesus and the church reveals how our lives often revolve around ourselves, our self-centered concerns, rather than the witness of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the world does not revolve around us. When we do that, you and me, when we do that, we make ourselves the hero of the Christian story. The true hero of the Christian story is the Christ. And God revealed through Jesus, the Christ. The true hero of the Christian story is not Christian leaders, pastors, or missionaries of the past, nor the superstars of the Christian world today. Speaking across the centuries into our present time, Jesus chastises our generation that is prone to idol worship, keen to celebrate human celebrities, and recklessly subverting the body of Christ in how we allow the values and ways of society and culture to slip in by the front door of the church or even unthinkingly embraced with open arms. Is it not worrying, this adulation that we bestow and heap upon Christian singers, Christian leaders, Christian preachers, and yes, also Christian pastors? 
love them, care for them, affirm them, and yes, encourage them by all means. But let's not idolize any of them. The true hero of the Christian story is the Christ. And God revealed through Jesus the Christ. To us, for whom it is so attractive to follow this fad or some appealing teaching, to view with admiration and awe those who are lifted up by human popularity, so keen to esteem and venerate mere human beings. Jesus reminds us in John 13, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in Him. If God is glorified in Him, God will glorify the Son in Himself and will glorify Him at once. Glory be to Jesus. The glory was always meant for Jesus, for God is glorified in Jesus, and in glorifying Jesus, we glorify God. So God and God alone deserves glory. Not us, not you and me, and certainly no mortal being. Driving home this point, Jesus says to his disciples, where I am going, you cannot come. Only Jesus can do the things that Jesus does. He dies, he rises, and he saves. Only Jesus. Jesus is the true hero of the gospel. Let no man or woman ever take his place. As this after-dinner conversation between Jesus and his disciples carries on, we hear Jesus declare a new command for his disciples, which tells us about the true business of Christians. So in this after-dinner conversation, Jesus declares a new command, the heart or call, the business of those who follow Jesus. Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. There is no time to waste. Judas has gone and he would soon be arrested and taken away. Jesus drives home in this command what he had already demonstrated earlier in that object lesson of feet washing. Love. Love one another. Love one another in the same way I have loved you, shown you, explained to you, and now command you. This is the true business of the disciple. This is what Paul, the later disciple of Jesus, had also understood when he declared in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, and now these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The ultimate guide and rule in all that we do as Christians, and as the church that follows Jesus, is love. So am I spending my time in a way that allows love to be experienced and expressed? Or am I living in a selfish way? How can I love my husband? How can I love my wife? How can I love my children? How can I love my parents? How can I love my siblings? How can I love my church? How can I love my neighbors, colleagues, community, country? Does how we live and what we do show love? Will our church programs and activities help us to love? Before I decide to get upset, angry, and act in a certain way with or within the church leadership, or in reacting to something on the internet, or as an active citizen in this nation, I have to ask then myself, is what I desire and my response motivated by the love of God? Would it be conveyed in love? And would it demonstrate the love of Jesus? Brothers and sisters, love is the true business of disciples of Jesus. Loving one another, loving others. That is our high.
calling. Let me pause a moment here. Loving one another, loving others, this is our high calling. As this command begins with the church, before it extends beyond, it begs the question of how we love one another as fellow disciples. Allow me to remind us that we cannot love one another without knowing each other or taking time to know a person's name, making time not to rush off after our church gathering services or meetings or nowadays our Zoom connections and not without making time for some, certainly not all of the activities of the church. And in these COVID times, we cannot love one another without checking in on one another beyond our online services and Zoom events. Nothing stops you and I from calling in to check on a brother or sister, making a visit or sharing a meal, of course, within our current safe distancing rules. Nothing stops us from making time for conversation, accountability and encouragement. This togetherness, community, mutual care and love is important. Jesus' command to love one another is followed immediately by an important teaching. Jesus tells us that when his disciples know and live out their true business of loving one another, it will have an amazing impact, a powerful testimony. Jesus points us to our true witness here. So Jesus said, By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Somehow, when we live out the reality of love as disciples, people will know. They will not only know our behavior, they will know our Savior. Somehow, when Christians live in unity of love, we will demonstrate the reality of Jesus, the power of the love of Jesus, and the gospel, the good news about Jesus. I think here Jesus warns us against shortcuts and dead ends in evangelism. If we want to witness the good news, to tell others about salvation, to evangelize our nation, and participate in effective missions to the world? The answer does not lie in some method of evangelism or outreach programs and rallies. Useful as they are in season, we are not called to rely on famous preachers, popular personalities, snazzy concerts, or exciting church-wide programs to win souls. It is much simpler and perhaps much harder. Our love for one another will be our true witness of Jesus. We are to love one another. That will be our witness. So Jesus says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. My research and my teaching at TTC focuses a lot on congregational life, the relationship between people in churches, and also the way leaders and lay persons interact. Time and again, I hear a steady and unrelenting stream of stories of conflict within the church, of personality clashes, of leaders' disagreements with other leaders, of abusive leaders and oppressed members, of apathetic members and depressed pastors, and of all sorts of relational and leadership dysfunctions and conflict. Many of these situations, someone or all of those involved, is often trying to take center stage and shape the will and direction of the church. Are you that someone? You see, when we try to put a focus on ourselves, our ideas, our preferences, our way, our will. We make the hero of the Christian story ourselves. 
When we do that, we have replaced Jesus. Like many of us, Simon Peter did not quite get what Jesus was saying, that Jesus was the true hero, and that our true business is not to do uh, what Jesus does, but to love. That will be our true witness. Oblivious to all that Jesus had just said, Simon Peter persists in asking Jesus, Lord, where are you going? When Jesus replied by repeating his earlier statement, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. This always eager Peter asks, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. At this, Jesus asks a question that I think is not just for Simon Peter, but for all of us. Will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Will you really lay down your life for me? Each time we fail to love, the rooster crows once again. Will you really lay down your life for me? Each time we fail to love others in the body of Christ, the rooster crows once again. Will you really lay down your life for me? This is a question that we should ponder today. Who is the real hero in your Christian story? Who is the real hero in your life? Who is the real hero in your family? Who is the real hero in your church? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the true hero of the gospel, and love is the true business of disciples of Jesus. And our love for one another will be our true witness of Jesus. Only when each of us and all of us stop contending and jostling to be number one in the church and stop trying to shift the focus from Jesus to ourselves, will Jesus be the true hero of our Christian story? Jesus the true hero who tells us to love one another asks today once again, will you really lay down your life for me? Let's pause for a moment and ask the Spirit to come and search our hearts as this question continues to resonate in our minds, in our hearts. Let's pray. Lord, help us answer your question honestly. And when there is, wherever we have resistance to your question, and we say to you, Lord, we find it difficult to lay ourselves down and to put you first. Lord Jesus, forgive us. Lord, help all of us turn our eyes to you as the true hero of the gospel. And today, recommit ourselves to love one another and make this our primary business as your disciples. So that, Lord, your church today here at Amokyo and all over the world, may be the true witness of Jesus Christ and bear good news to a world that desperately needs this good news about Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen.